Okay, I'm going to do quick, two quick videos basically to show you how to deal with strings. Um, and this is related to Diana's question. Um, if you have, uh, so let's say you're getting an XML file from weather.gov. I showed you how to do that in class. And you're interested in the current temperature. Let's say, I don't think this is the case, but let's say they gave it to you like this, 83 degrees Fahrenheit. And you just want the, the number part of it. Well, something I haven't shown you is that... Um, you know, this is related to object-oriented programming, which we haven't talked about, but there are times where uh, this, this string is actually an object, and that object has methods. So methods are basically functions that are tied directly to that object. So if that doesn't make sense, you'll be able to see how it works right here. Basically, you just put a dot there and then some function that, that goes with that, um, that variable. So there's one of them is substring, and you can find all of them by just looking at the documentation for string. Um, but if we take a look at this function and run it, we'll see that um, what this does is it goes, it, it basically looks at each character in the string as a, uh, a numbered element. So there's character number 0, character number 1, character number 2. So running substring with an argument of 2 says give me item number 2. Um, but there's actually, uh, it's actually a little more interesting than that. If there's more to the string, you'll see that it, um, it actually starts at 2 and gives you the rest of the string. Uh, if I was interested in item no or character number 2 through character number 5, I could run it like this. And if you look at the bottom, you see it gave me 2, 3, 4. So it's basically uh, between, it's starting at 2, but uh, it ends just before item number 5. So um, what else? Uh, there's also something called um, length, which gives you the length of the string. That should give us, there we go, 11. There are 11 characters in the string. Um, some other possibilities are index of. So let's, let's go back to this other thing where we say that it actually comes across as 83F, but we're interested in just the 83 part. That, that original thing that I did where I, I say, okay, give me, I can say give me everything starting at zero and give me uh, everything up to two. That gives me a number, but it's not so great because uh, this could be 102 or this could be three degrees Fahrenheit. So that might screw things up. So with all these things dealing with strings, it really depends on the, the data that you're looking at. If you knew it was always going to be two numbers, this would work out fine. Um, but between this, the length, um, and a couple other functions or methods, you'd be able to figure out how to make this make this work successfully with different size numbers. Um, here's one that basically tells you where the F is in the string. So it tells me that it's at character number two. Um, and conversely, you can say, give me the character that's at item number one or position number one. So that's the three. So between all those things, you should be able to figure it out. Uh, one last thing I'll tell you is that um, if I get just the number portion, that doesn't mean that it's a number. So um, here's an example. I want to store this as an integer, and I'll call it temp. So if I do this, you'll see that there's a problem. Can't convert from string to int. So even though the, the string that comes back is 83, it's two characters put together, 8 and 3. Um, it's not necessarily a number. So one way we can convert from a string to a number is to just use the int function and say anything inside here, change it to an integer before you assign it to temp. So that works fine. And I can't really see anything here, but if I wanted to now print something like, um, let's say, the temperature plus 10, it should, uh, it should throw back 93. So I'm able to deal with it as a number now. Um, and I, th I think that's all I wanted to show you for this. Uh, this is kind of the simplest way to do it. Every programming language has these kinds of functions where you can get substrings or find out what's at a certain position in a string. But uh, there's more advanced ways of dealing with strings, and I'll show those in a second video.